Hey guys, this is Eric from In-House Solutions. Today I'm bringing you part one of an in-depth series on how to create custom 3D lathe tools in Mastercam. This file is available for download in the video description below if you want to follow along. In this tutorial, I'm going to be using Mastercam 2024, although the information in this series will apply to any version that supports 3D lathe tooling. So that should be versions 2019 and after. There will be some later tutorials that use functions that are specific to versions 2022 and later. Although this first episode, the essentials, is gonna apply to any version. All that I've done so far is that I've downloaded my holder from the internet and merged it into my file. In this case, my holder came with an insert already pre-aligned. In most cases, this insert is going to be generic and won't match the corner radius of the actual insert that you plan on using. So either you'll need to download the insert separately and then mate it to the holder, or we can modify the insert. Typically, modifying the insert corner radius is preferable as it's a lot easier. If you need to mate the insert to the holder, then we have a separate tutorial for this linked in the description below. A caveat to creating 3D lathe tools is that you must create a new tool assembly for each new corner radius that you plan on using. So in my case, I'm going to be using a 0.8 millimeter insert corner radius. So I'm going to have to modify this insert. The easiest way to do this is to go to the model prep tab choose remove fillets and then select the fillet that you want to remove and then click OK. Next I'm going to go to the solids tab, choose constant fillet, select the edge that I want to fill it and click OK. And now I'll type in the radius that I want to use. In this case 0.8 millimeters. Press enter and then click OK. Even though my holder is not properly oriented in the position that I want to use it, this is OK. You don't need to do this before creating a 3D tool. Now that our tool is prepped and ready, we can start actually defining the tool. The first step here is going to be to add a machine group since we don't have access to the lathe tool manager yet. So I'm going to go to the machine tab, choose lathe default, and now I can open the lathe tool manager. For this tutorial, I'm going to create a new tool library. So I'm going to click right here and I'll give it a name. So now I have a blank tool database. And now I can right click up here in this blank space and choose create 3D tool. First thing I'll do is I'll give my tool a name. I could also define the type of tool for the assembly and I could give it the tool station number. I'm just going to leave this as default for right now. And then I'll click on next. Now it's time to start defining the components of the assembly. So I'm going to right click in here and choose define a component. The first component that we want to define is the holder. In later videos, we'll discuss what the extension and the adapter is for. But for right now, we can select any geometry that is not the insert and say that that is the holder. So I'm going to click here and then just select the holder from the graphics view and do end selection. Now we can see our holder is displayed on the screen. Note that it's not in the correct orientation. That's OK. Anything else on this page is not necessary and is only used for setup sheets. So I'll click Next. Now we need to define the machine side connection. I'll click here to select that from the graphics view. In this case, it's going to be the face of the flange right here. If we needed to rotate the tool 
because it was not in the correct orientation. You can see how like in this orientation, the insert faces down. It could also face up, but we just don't want it facing to the side. If we needed to correct that, we could rotate it using the dynamic gnomon here, but we don't need to. So I'll just click OK, or sorry, not OK. I'm going to press Enter to confirm. Again, our holder doesn't need to be in the orientation that we're going to use it in yet. On this page, it's more things that we can add to see in our setup sheet, such as the type of holder. I could say that it's Capto size C4. I don't need to do that in this case. We're just looking at the basics. So I'll click next. And we don't need to mate anything because we only have one component so far. So we'll do OK. Don't mind this error right now. It's because I'm on a beta version of 2024, but everything should be working fine. Next, I want to define the insert. So I'm going to right click here in the assembly tree and choose define an insert. Next, I'm going to select the model from the graphics view. So I'm going to select my insert. We could define what type of insert this is, is it general turning, is it threading, grooving? Again, this is all information that would just appear on our setup sheet. The one other thing that we want to change on this page would be the cutting side, whether this is a right hand or left hand tool. And I'm just going to match the image that I see here when I hover over these two options to what I see on the screen. So in this case, it is a left hand tool. I'll click next. Now I want to define the corner radius. So in this case, I know that it's 0.8 millimeters, but I could also select the corner radius from the graphics view. So I get my corner radius right there. Here is where I would enter in my tool offset number. In this case, let's change it to 10, just so we can see that when we finish creating the tool. Now I'll click on next. This step would be for mating the insert to the holder. Again, this was already done for us and you can check the tutorial in the description below if you need to do that. I don't need to do that, so I'm gonna click next. Now we wanna define the cutting plane. In this case, you can see how the face that it's showing me what to select in the preview here I don't have a face like that on my holder that I could select. Your instinct might be to select the insert face as that looks like a cutting plane, but you'll see here why we don't want to do that. If I do select face and then select this insert face, you see it rotates the entire holder to make the face of the insert parallel to the top plane. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to actually select a named plane. And if you have to select a named plane due to having like a negative rake angle insert like this, it's always either going to be the top or the bottom plane. In this case, I choose the top plane because the insert faces up. If the insert was facing down, then I would choose bottom, but I'll choose top. Next, if we needed to, we could provide the offset here. So let's just change this so we can see what that would look like if I put in 0.5. Basically, what we want to do is we want to have the tip of the insert where it contacts the material to be at the top plane. So if you had something like this, you could fix it by clicking on the select offset and then select a point on the insert. In this case, because mine was already at zero, if I do this, it's actually going to move it further away. See, it goes in the opposite direction, but I'll just put zero here. You can actually see I do have a slight mismatch here, so I will do my select offset. And really, you just need to select a point anywhere on the radius 
and that should be fine. I'm going to do right here on the midpoint. Next, we have this up direction. This would only be necessary if you made a mistake selecting either top or bottom up here. You can see that this arrow is indicating the insert up direction, and it matches what I see here. So that's fine. I don't need to change anything here. I'll click on Next. Now we have some tolerances for the insert and holder boundary. Usually, you're fine leaving these as default. One tenth for the insert, two thou for the holder should be fine. I'll click on Next. Now we're going to define the actual orientation of the tool as it's held in the machine. So I'll go to the top plane, because this should match my view when I'm standing in front of the machine. I could say that the holder is vertical or horizontal. In my case, it is vertical. This is going to be for a top turret. And I'm using this tool in the left spindle. And my rotation should be clockwise MO4 for this tool because the insert is facing up. So this is all good. I'll click Next. Now we want to define the actual compensation point of the tool. Typically, I prefer to do this from the select tool center um, from two tangent sides. So I'm going to click right here, and then I'll just click on the two sides of the insert. If I do Alt S to see the wireframe view, I can see this red circle now. This is my compensation. So I want to see that this is more or less matching up with my boundary of the insert. It doesn't have to be exactly. Obviously, there's some tessellation here. So you can see that it doesn't match up perfectly, but that's totally fine. In my case, I'm using the corner because that's how I want to pick up the tool on the machine. I select my quadrant, quadrant one. My plunge and cut direction, you can see in the graphics view here, it's showing that the primary cut direction is going in the Z minus direction and the primary plunge direction is going in X minus. So this would be pretty typical for this kind of tool. If it was wrong, I could flip it to opposite. And you can see how these flip. I'll leave it as defined. On this page, the last step <clears throat> is to define the side clearance angle and end clearance angle. So you can see if I hover over these, you can see what angle it's talking about here. This will be important to define in order for your tool to respect the um, plunge parameters uh, when you're actually creating a tool path. So I hover over this, I see that it's it wants this angle right here. So I can click on this button to select that edge. And it automatically puts that angle into this field for me. I'll do the same thing for the end clearance angle. And now we have this height and width. Typically for this type of tool, I will just put in like one inch for these. And you can see if I do Alt S again, these are, imagine that's the edge and it's just extended off past the tool. Setting this too small can cause issues when you're plunging, but setting it very large like this is safer. You could try and get this exactly right. I would have a difficult time using the select from two arcs in this scenario because my insert has this negative rank, rake angle. So these projected boundaries are not exactly arcs anymore. They're splines. Um, so it's a lot of extra work to get it exactly right. And it's not necessary. So I usually just do one inch, one inch. Good enough. I'll click on next. And the last page here is just for setting defaults for your cutting parameters for the tool. I'm not going to bother with any of this, 
So I'm just going to click OK. I can't ignore these warnings just because I'm on a beta version. So now I can see my holder and my insert are all properly in my assembly. I can click OK to save the assembly. And now I have my tool here. Two things I want to do now, I want to add the tool to my library. I do that just by clicking on the tool and then clicking this down arrow. I have my scaling set up kind of weird on my monitor right now, so I need to move this to the other screen just to click OK. I'll save my tool to the assembly, or my assembly to the library. And now the last thing that I want to do is I want to create a toolpath just so I can test my tool and make sure that everything works okay. So if I go to level one here, I have a part that I pre-made for this tutorial. And I'm going to use the finish toolpath. Just select some geometry here to turn. Select my tool. And I'll just leave everything as default, do OK, and then just backplot my toolpath. And I'm just checking that when I go into a corner that the insert is being compensated correctly. This looks good. Everything's working out OK. So that's it for part one of the Lathe Tool series. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing or dropping a like. If you have any questions on this video or suggestions for future videos that I could make, then please leave a comment below. The next video in the series is going to be looking at a boring bar and creating a modular tool assembly so you can swap out different holders, different extensions. So stay tuned for that.